Hi, my name's Lindy and welcome to my channel. My website is www.lindycowling.co.uk. My email is info at lindycowling.co.uk. And the title of this video today is The Triad, The Gift. The Triad, The Gift. So what do I mean by the triad, the gift? So if you are a new subscriber to this channel, this is a channel that is a template into the conscious quantum authentic heart and it is an experiential channel, which means everything I talk about, share, explain, channel etc is from a place and a space of experience that's personal and professional experience so the triads what do i mean by the triads and for this video the purposes of this video the triad is the brain or the mind, the imagination and the heart, the brain or mind, the imagination and the heart all interlinked. Now throughout let's say <clears throat> spiritual teachings and throughout light worker teachings it's very commonplace for people to almost let's say teach and share and talk about practically being at war with the brain at war with the ego at war with the mind and at war with the imagination so in some ways it's almost deemed as something that one has to get rid of or annihilate or kind of smash into the ground so that those faculties apart from the faculty of positive thinking are almost like deemed as not allowed and there's a lot of kind of judgment out there to do with that so this video the triad is taking a complete different take on that and kind of explaining how amazing the mind and brain can be and the imagination so the mind brain we we'll call the mind brain the same thing for this video so the mind brain the imagination and the heart how fantastic the brain or the mind can be the imagination for actually getting you into the heart clearing a lot of old patterns and belief systems and actually keeping you in the heart so let me explain what i mean over the years and that's not far off 20 years now actually i think it's year 19 as we enter 2019 ironically i believe uh, but it's not far of 20 years that I've worked in an arena of, uh, let's say, helping people, guiding people as a therapist, as a healer, as a hypnotherapist, as a medium clairvoyant psychic, and then someone specialising in the soul and soul connections and spiritual connections and awakening and ascension in later years. So over that period of time, what I have noticed in other people that I work with, but also what I have gone through myself is that you go through a period of time where it almost seems that seems that the brain, your ego or your mind is your worst enemy. And millions and millions, I would even go as far as to say billions, actually billions of the billions on the planet get tangled up very much in their mind and can almost be at war of it, at war with it, like a tug of war, like 
feeling that they don't have any control over their mind and their mind has control over them and so there's a constant battle and inner battle going on and within a lot of teachings let's say modern teachings modern light worker teachings it's almost taught that um, it's kind of the brain and the mind should be kind of almost like flattened and drummed into an element of control. So what I'm going to say is, is kind of a, a different way of looking at it and say that the brain mind is a fantastic, fantastic tool that we have that can help us significantly if we approach our mind as part of us, let's say in a helpful way, and if we don't go to war with it, because the power of our, our brain, the power of our mind is fantastic. It's an unlimited gift that can, if used for us and not against us continually by the programming in society, by the programming in our culture, by our own programming, by family programming, by the constant dialogue that we give ourselves 24 seven, if we actually, let's say, are mindful of that and actually encourage ourselves to work with ourselves in a helpful way, it is a fantastic gift. And it's actually, let's say, pretty much an essential part of the triad, an essential part of the package, because one makes a transformation, one makes a transition from the mind, from the brain, into the heart running the show. But it doesn't mean to say that the brain and the mind and the personality is not being used. It's all part of you. It's just running through the heart first and not from the brain first. But the two work in tandem. It's, you're a complete, let's say, a complete unit, a complete being. So all parts of your system, if you like, all parts of your energy field, all parts of you as consciousness, mind, body, spirit, soul, brain, mind, imagination, heart, are all on board. I'm going to say, or are they? Because in most cases, one or the other is not on board. And a lot of the issues people get tangled up in and with are with their own minds. Uh, for all the reasons that I've just listed, but they can they can actually be at war with themselves. So they can have a dialogue running all the time. Um, let me give you some simple examples. Um, their mind saying, you should be able to do this. You should be able to do that. Um, it's almost like a, you could say, an authoritative parent, a negative parent dialogue going, oh, for God's sake, you're stupid. Or why can't you do this? Why can't you do that? Why aren't you doing it like this? Why aren't you like this? Why aren't you like that? You should be doing this now. You should be doing that now. And this is this is for the average person. That's actually considered quite normal. And that's not once in a while. That's 24-7 a constant inner dialogue going on in their brain, in their mind, which of course that constant inner dialogue releases chemicals. It releases particular chemicals that can be um, quite detrimental to the system if it's not temporary, but month in, month out, year in, year out. You know, huge effect on the stress hormones, huge effect on the cortisol, etc., 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 to name but a few. So. When the when one realizes when one realizes as part of their awakening that their mind is feeding them, let's say a, a powerful inner dialogue that is not helpful, and in some ways, yeah, you could dig a deep a bit deeper to see where it came from, and you'll almost certainly track it back to where it came from in your history, in your culture, in your family, in your society. You'll you'll find it. But maybe not always, you know, and sometimes, you know, sometimes it's helpful to know, sometimes it doesn't really matter. You know, it varies where it came from. But when you're aware that you have this this powerful inner dialogue going, 
that can affect your mental health, your physical health, your spiritual health, your soul health significantly you can do something about it now the first thing to do about it is you do not go to war with your own mind because quite frankly you go round and round and up your own backside don't do it don't go to war with your own mind it's part of who you are you make peace with your own mind you catch yourself doing it and you might catch yourself doing it hundreds of times a day and that's not an exaggeration. Hundreds of times a day, you might catch yourself running a particular dialogue that's not helpful. And if you do, uh, what you do is rather than berate yourself or, <coughs> excuse me, um, go to war with yourself over it, what you do is you you make peace with it. And first of all, you might have to do it in a way like, oh, hang on a minute, that, that's, no, I don't believe that. Actually, you, you let's say reframe it or change the negative dialogue. So you would say something like whatever your whatever the dialogue is, you would say the opposite or just say no. If, if the opposite is too big a leap for you and it's like, no, that's that's too big a leap. Then just say something that's much, much softer than that and get into the habit, the actual neural, neural pathway, the reprogramming of your mind in a way that is not de detrimental against yourself or judgmental against yourself or literally metaphorically beating yourself up. Now, the amazing, fantastic gift that the brain and the mind is, is that it is programmable, totally and utterly programmable. I have a very long history, let's say again, not nearly 19 years, not that far off the 20 year mark of um, working in trance, uh, qualified in hypnotherapy, so I know about that side of things. And the brain, the conscious, the subconscious, the unconscious is totally programmable by everything you're seeing, breathing, believing, everything, the environments you're in again, the families, the cultures, what you're watching on telly, what you're listening to in music, your, it, it all affects your hologram, your reality, your perception, your life choices. It's programmable and a huge part of people's lives are utterly run from these programs that they didn't even know they had running. So the fantastic thing here, the gift about the brain or the mind that is because it is programmable, you can literally reprogram your own brain and mind to start playing ball, metaphorically speaking, to start not no longer being at war with you, but to be a team player, to be a teammate, to be part of the overall unified being that you are. So it's a question almost of getting into the habit of it. It's a question of making it a habit. And you might catch yourself many, many times in many ways giving yourself negative rhetoric. And it's a case of, again, reframing it. You don't have to, for some of you, it might be a big leap, too big a leap to say, to, to, to correct yourself, your thoughts or what you're saying out loud to yourself if it's negative. It might be too big a leap to do completely the opposite, but you can do something halfway that's much, much softer and start changing the pattern. Now, not only does this change it psychologically, but if we talk in terms of energy, you are changing the energy signature. So you're changing a neural pathway, you're changing your consciousness, you're changing your energy, you're changing your vibration. Actually, you're lifting your vibration and raising your vibration and frequency. You can't do it just in one or two days overnight. It has to become a habit. Some of you have been running those habits for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years. So you can't expect to do it once or twice, catch yourself, and then expect it all to change. So you might have to keep that practice going a number of weeks or a number of months, months until you find that your brain and mind takes over and runs with that ball without you having to keep reminding it. In other words, you won't find yourself doing this negative rhetoric 
hardly at all, if at all. And you will start to gradually notice, oh, crikey, I just feel so much better. I feel so much lighter. I feel so much more um, happier. I feel so much more joyful. I feel so much more compassionate and loving. Even if life is throwing particular things in your direction, they're not hitting you in the same way. You just feel so much better in yourself. Your physical health may be improving. Your mental health may, may be improving. Your soul health, your spirit health, what, what all of it may be improving. So it's a fantastic thing. And we absolutely have to have all parts of us as a unified sovereign being on board with ascending within ourselves, ascending from let's say the programmed lower levels of our consciousness to the unprogrammed or should I say consciously programmed by us versions of us. So our consciousness ascended into the heart, the portal of the heart, which is where you access, let's say, all versions of you as a consciousness, all timelines, all realities, multidimensionally, when I say access it, let's say you're online to it, not that you're aware of every single one, because in, in some ways that would probably drive you a bit loopy, but that you have, it's like a huge memory bank that's forever expanding, that you have the knowing on, and you could pick a particular file out if you wanted of a life or a timeline, or you don't have to but it's all there within the heart. So every part of our body, mind, spirit, soul has to be on board for, with this, not one part of it not on board. And it seems to me the brain, the personality, the mind is the most common place that people almost go to war with. Now it is true to say that millions uh, get caught up with inner child stuff and inner child consciousness. And I've mentioned this on my channel before, and talked about that and done a video or two on that. Um, but I still feel, and then that is a major place to get tangled up, but I still feel a lot of the time it's it's the kind of programming in the brain and the mind and the perception. Um, and there's also this belief system that the, the personality is no longer required, which is quite funny. That is quite funny. Um, I'm unrecognisable in every sense of the word to how I was a number of years ago on this journey. But I still have a personality and actually I have a strong personality, but not a, a brutal, forceful personality. I have a strong personality. It's part of who I am. It's part of how I express. It's part of how I communicate. Uh, although I'm much more gentle and compassionate and loving and it all goes through the filter of my heart now, that capacity to be able to communicate and to illustrate and to talk about things in, let's say, articulate fashion, but plainly as well and basically on a basic level is part of who I am and is part of how I'm able to be up here doing YouTube videos. So... Your personality softens, shall we say, and it does, but it is not annihilated, and it's you know it's just kind of a myth that 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 is the case. So if you are someone, and let's use another example uh, with this particular triad. So I'm going to call it the the brain mind or the ego mind, same kind of thing. Uh, your imagination, using the power of your imagination to create, to shift your energy, to expand your energy into the heart and the heart. So if you're someone, for example, then that you would say to me, well, where I keep getting stuck is my mind is always giving me these kind of this this rhetoric or this negativity and it's in connection to the way I was brought up so let's give you a nice easy example bearing in mind this is a totally experiential channel which means I'm talking from people's experiences and mine so the example I use here is being brought up in um, a very violent household 
with violent, unstable parents, uh, narcissists, psychopaths. And in the example, the person being, let's say, programmed, inadvertently programmed from the age of zero, that the environment was not safe. They weren't safe. They weren't particularly wanted, but they particularly weren't safe. There was a lot of noise, shouting, instability, a fear, terror. Someone goes through the first 21 years of their life witnessing intense violence in the home, mental violence, emotional violence, physical violence, up close and personal, culminating in um, attempted murder. Seeing all that for the first 21 years of life. They then come away from that, uh, end up marrying someone very gentle, very soft. And all the 21 years that the person was programmed with, that almost post-traumatic stress disorder, that hypervigilance, that war zone for the first 21 years, all the time that the central nervous system was kind of, let's say, forming its perception of reality, hasn't gone anywhere, it's still on high alert. So their, their nervous system is on high alert, fight or flight, because it had to be in order to survive, overstimulated. So as the person goes into adulthood, certain things come out. They might have stomach disorders, kind of nervous disorders, kind of nervous breakdown-y territory, anxiety, uh, things like this never putting two and two together and looking back at their past and then as time goes on even if that some of their life is very very balanced and stable at some point during one's ascension pro, uh, process or awakening if like just for this example if those kind of characteristics or circumstances are there when someone makes a transition or is being encouraged internally by external events, meeting someone or having a shock to the, um, their life or awakening in some other way. At some point, all that went before, the programming, the background, the inner child stuff, the brain, the mind, is going, you're going to come up against that soup of things in there, not to punish you, or keep you in suffering, or keep you in poor physical health, or keep you in poor mental health, but to encourage you to recognize the unconscious and make it conscious, recognizing where it's coming from and changing it. Now, you could say to me, I can't, but how can I change it? Because my parents are dead now. So how do I change it? I don't mean have to change it that way. You have to change the way you perceive it and the way you feel about it and the way it's affecting you now. Because if you've got parents that you grew up with that, that that took place or maybe sexual abuse or maybe something else there, uh, and then they're, they're, they've passed over now, they're no longer in this dimension, so you can't physically go and resolve it. I'm not saying you do have to go physically resolve it. This can all be resolved within you. Totally resolved within you. Because it's how it's affecting you now. So you use that fantastic gift of your brain, your mind, your personality, and you use it for you. Not to go to war against you, your own brain, but you use it with for your benefit. You use it for your well-being. You use your imagination to change the messages you're giving yourself, but also to change the circumstances that brought it about. So if you have vivid memories of such an abusive childhood and your parents were very dysfunctional, uh, very difficult. Now, yes, let's get out of the territory of, yes, we choose our parents and we choose the families we come into. Yes, I fervently feel that as well. But we're not dealing with that today. We're now dealing with the consequences of negative experiences or post-traumatic stress disorder, 
um, negative, negative consciousness within you that is affecting your health and well-being and you moving forward and expanding now. You're getting stuck. You can't get any further in your ascension because you're getting tangled up in all that still. So what you do, so say, for example, in this simple example, you had pretty diabolical parents and they did the best they could, but were totally dysfunctional because of their backgrounds or because of issues within them, mental health issues, whatever. You use the fantastic gift of your mind brain, the fantastic gift of your imagination to imagine that they were the absolutely greatest, amazing parents somebody could ever have. So to keep it simple, if you had violent, unstable, unpredictable parents that were, let's say, in every sense of the word, abusive, even though they didn't realise they were being definitely abusive, you can reframe and change all of that, not only on a psychology level, not only on like an NLP level, not only on a neural pathway level, but in terms of your energy, vibration and frequency, because it ups it by shifting this stuff. And you can use the power of your imagination to tell your mind brain to play the game that your parents were the most wonderful parents ever. They were parents that encouraged every step you took. They expressed their love for you on a regular basis. They told you how much they loved you. You sat on their lap and cuddled them when you were little. They read you stories. They tucked you into bed. They told you you were beautiful. They encouraged you. They told you the world is your oyster. You can achieve anything if you want it. They told you that our priority for you is your health and well-being and happiness. And we will always be there supporting you on every level, every way that we can. We are with you. We are on your team. We'll always be in your heart. We love you. You can, you know, you can see I'm running with that particular ball metaphorically. You can see it, feel it, experience it, almost like touch it, taste it. Even if you never experienced it in your real life, your imagination is incredible. Some of you will be more visual than auditory. Some of you will be more feely, kinesthetic. Incorporate as much as you can. But really, the feeling it is really important, the most important part. And what it does is it changes your brain chemistry. If you, if you keep practicing this for like five minutes every day or something, it changes your brain chemistry, your body chemistry, your consciousness, your frequency, your vibration, your mind programming. What you are doing, you're not only reprogramming yourself, your own consciousness, you are raising your consciousness and frequency, you are, in a, in a sense, in essence, erasing the negativity of such events that are affecting you today, many years later, and you are giving yourself the best possible, let's say, soil and earth in which to grow, like a, like a flower, it needs certain things to grow, to bloom, to expand. And if you are shut in the dark with no light and just a bombarding of negativity from your own brain and mind, which was programmed by such events, well, you can see if you shut a plant in those circumstances, it's not going to do well. Not only is it not going to do well, but it's going to suffer and it's going to distort and the, the, the life force isn't running there in the way it, it could or should. So you're not going to get a plant that thrives and turns into a vast sunflower or a plant that ascends, if you like, a plant that goes into the heart. You're not going to get any of that if, if you're inwardly shut in the dark, almost cut off from your own life force, distorted away from it because of this kind of thing. So it's an amazing thing. So just to summarize in that, so that was a powerful example. Just to summarize, whatever's happened in your life, 
And some people go through some horrendous things. And actually, in my lifetime, I've gone through um, some amazing things and some absolutely horrendous ones. The way you perceive these things in your life is everything. And the way that you, let's say, change your body chemistry, help your consciousness, help yourselves to not only recover from these things, because recovery is one thing, that's one stage of it. But it's not just survive, you want to thrive, you know, so many are surviving just, you know, hanging on by their nails onto the cliff edge that you want to be, you want to be thriving. And I know, again, because I've, I've been there, you know, to, to where surviving had to be enough, actually, because it's a miracle I was surviving. So you want to be thriving. So it's a question of changing the way that those things affect you now because all we have is now past present and future all we have is now this very second again and changing the effect of it now because it's amazing what your mind and your brain and your imagination can do when you are working together as part of the overall package it has to be that you're working together with all parts of your body system that's your physical body mental body etheric body pain body consciousness inner child unconscious subconscious all the different parts of us mind body spirit soul essence we're, we're all the same within ourselves. All of those aspects I'm mentioning here are all part of your team, like a football team. You wouldn't have a complete team if half of your inner players that I'm reeling off here aren't engaged in the game. You're always going to have to work that much harder. You're never going to quite make it to hit that goal into the net. If half your players are incapacitated in these programs or off at left field or off at right field, you don't want all your players, all parts of you sitting on the reserve bench. You want to be engaged in that game as one team because then, quite frankly, you're unstoppable. And on that note, that is my gift to you, my Christmas gift to you on the 22nd of December 2018. I hope whatever you're doing you have a festive holiday season that is meaningful and lovely for you. I'm sure it'll be different for a lot of different people and people celebrate in different ways or don't celebrate but have a lovely end to this year. I don't know if I'll be back on camera before the end of the year or not I work 100% on instinct, intuition, uh, from the heart. I suddenly felt inspired, kind of like driven to get up on here today. You know, I might be busy with other things or not feel inspired or driven to do that, you know, till we're into 2019. I don't know. Or I could be on here again tomorrow. Who knows? But if I'm not, I wish you an absolutely wonderful end to this year. Uh, for many years, for many of us, it's been quite a challenging one again. Uh, amazing things for me this year and really cha big challenges again. Um, hang on in there. I know a lot of you are very, very tired of the intensity. And sometimes I get very tired of the intensity. Although for me, the most intense year was 2016. I kind of hit that inner, uh, an inner point of consciousness then where however intense it gets, it never feels quite as intense as it did then, but it comes out with me in different ways, other ways which are challenging. So hang on in there. The ride's not, uh, this, the intense part of the ride is not plateauing at the moment. So look after yourself, take care of yourself, take care of one another. I wish you so much love. Thanks for watching me on the channel. Thanks for supporting the channel and subscribing. And, and I really appreciate the donations. Take care. Bye, guys.